Well, hello, friends. Welcome. Today, we are starting our very first ever Decorate With Me video series right here on A Sparkly Life for me. I'm Alessandra, and I'm going to be walking you through some wonderful ideas that are all in my head that I would like to share with you. Now, the theme for right now is Bridgerton, and let me explain why. Besides it being a crazy popular series, both in the books and now on Netflix, it is taking over so much. And what do I mean by that? I mean, it's starting to influence things like home decor. So if you Google uh, trends or you track any of that stuff, you'll start seeing in the years to come, especially for 2022 and beyond, Regency era is going to be popping up more and more probably not going to knock mid-century modern out of the way completely, but it's definitely going to start infiltrating the market. We're already seeing it start trending for weddings, parties, celebrations. All of the industry leaders in the entertainment and events industry are starting to have more and more elements inspired by Bridgerton at their events. So it's coming and I love it. It's a visually beautiful show. Uh, it's not authentic 100%. There's lots of stylizations, but it's gorgeous. So I thought, what better way to get my ideas out there and share them and inspire you and others than to make a video with lots of visual aid. Now, this video isn't sponsored. This is just me designing boards because I like doing it. And I, there's just not enough time and hours in the day for me to make everything that I want to make. And for those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. Um, this is not my first Bridgerton project at all. In fact, not too long ago, uh, in fact, this very year, I made this wisteria tree backdrop inspired by the scene that you see here on the left from this series. And I made myself a little reading nook so I could continue reading my books underneath it. And it was up in my house for gosh, most of this year, most of 2021, and it was just such a wonderful escape from all the crazy in the world. This is a nice little nook in my house where I could just put my feet up for a minute and read and relax, and I loved it. I will make sure all of the video tutorials are linked below in case you want to make something like this in your home. And then, this wasn't enough for me, so I went ahead and I had made this Feathering Tins inspired spring tablescape obviously you can see where the Featheringtons come in here if you've seen the series, but lots of bright pinks and yellows and greens and kind of like Hogwarts has its house colors. Bridgerton families kind of have their own colors that they tend to lean towards. Not always, but they tend to. And Penelope tends to wear most of these colors <laughs> quite often, and I just love them. I love um, just so much about it. So, I wanted to keep making things, like I said, so I thought, okay, well, like, let's just start with some of the most iconic pieces. And one of the elements in the series that stood out to me the most is the Bridgerton house. Now, I realize this picture is pixelated. I obviously don't own this picture or these pictures, but um, there are, is a little CGI going on in this series. We know that, um, and I'm not like a pro Bridgerton person, like, I only know so much, but. This is a real house in real life that they spruced up, did some CGI on, and this is generally what it looks like. So it's a beautiful mansion in London, and it's got purple wisteria, what I'm assuming is some sort of dogwood trees, some rambling roses, lots of greenery. There's all sorts of beautiful, just natural, I would say elegance, but pretty much natural elegance. Uh, nature is just kind of letting <laughs> it itself have free reign over the house, but it's manicured and it's obviously well maintained. So I always look at this and I think, gosh, what a beautiful backdrop that would be potentially for a wedding, vow renewal, anything like that. It's just, it's so perfect. But let's, you know, in all honesty, this is a house in London. There's not a whole lot of them probably in the world that look like that, let alone where all of us live. So what can we take from this? And so that's where my brain started going. So I was like, okay, the elements here that I think are the stand up pieces are the wisteria, the trees, the bushes, the shrubbery. Like, so we're, that's my inspiration. That's where we're going from this. So where did I take that? Well, I found a lot of this stuff actually on Shop Wild Things. Actually, most of this stuff, this is not a sponsored video or anything. I just, they just have a lot of great stuff and a lot of it fits with this theme. So what are we looking at here? This element is a wireframe tree 
that is about nine or ten feet by fifteen feet uh, wide, and it depend. I say that about because it depends on what you're doing. So this tree is filled with, I want to say around 40 little nooks and cranny um, crevices that you can put silk stems in and you can kind of see them here, like little stems like this. And so the tree is the base and then you add in whatever branches and stems you want, which is so cool. You can make it into a million different things if you wanted. And so I thought, okay, that already looks pretty close to the shapes and stuff over here. Now, obviously, Wisteria can be trees, it can be vines, I realize that, but we're going with the tree version here, okay? So we have a tree form, and then they happen to have these uh, purple wisteria. Now, I used uh, in my elements here that I made, some of the wisteria is actually from them, so I have purchased some of their wisteria, and I purchased the smaller ones to go over the front. So they have them in lots of different colors and shapes and lengths and whatnot, but in purple, because this is the Bridgerton house that we're replicating or in being inspired by, they have two different style of the wisteria sprays and foliage shoots. So you can get these, these, and then put them in this tree, right? And then that's how you change the trees look. So obviously they don't have one of these. So I'm just visually editing it on here, but I just took a bunch of these sprays. Now, obviously, it's going to look different uh, depending on how you place them, but you put them in and the tree transforms into a beautiful wisteria tree. And from, if you watch their videos they have on their website, it looks like it goes together pretty quick because you're just taking the stems and putting them in all of the holes. And if you want to make it more thick, you put more stems in. If you want it less thick, you put less stems in. And then if you want even more, you just tape them in with floral tape. So very, very reasonable and easy thing to do. So that's kind of giving us that purple that we see in the height. Obviously, it's your wedding. Potentially, you do what you want. So if you don't want purple and you want white, do white. We're just sticking with the theme here. Now, I'm not opposed to this wire frame being exposed, but I think for the purposes of this event, for the theme that we're going for, I would like to see it covered up ever so slightly. So what I'm going to recommend is boxwood. Uh, this happens to be a boxwood vine garland from Shop Wild Things. I, for my picture purposes, I just used one of them, uh, you, but you'll probably need a few of them to cover the base if that's what you wanted to do, just because of the height and the width and everything. Um, but boxwood is a very classic element. It gets used a lot. It's, it's, I don't want to say it's a neutral in greenery, but it kind of is. Like it can be used with so much. So that's why I recommended it. And there's a good chance you're pro there's probably some vine in there that that is boxwood. But I think that's going to help add a nice climbing element. And of course, you can adorn it and decorate out the bottoms and everything how you see fit or your decorator or whoever. Uh, bring them this picture and be like, hey, this is what I want. And they'll get what you're going for. So going back to our pictures here, we kind of have the wisteria cover. We've got a lot of the greenery here. Uh, I'm not going to go down the route of the rambling roses because that's a whole other look, I think. Um, so I wanted to focus on kind of the purple and white because I think those could be really pretty. So we've kind of got the taller element of our potential wedding altar here, and that's going to be these wisteria trees. So even these here, it does it might not, I know it doesn't show in proportion here, but these trees could be easily 15 feet across each. So this is 30 feet. This is going to have a big impact in your uh, wedding or altar. Uh, I mean, there's so many things. You could turn these into an entrance, honestly, but let's keep going because we're trying to focus on this just being an altar. There's so many things you could do with these. Okay. So the next thing I wanted to make sure we got in here was a little pop of white and it turns out that Shop Wild Things, who has an incredible collection of artificial flowering trees, by the way, uh, they have these dogwood trees. And I don't know if you can see them right here, but it's, I'm assuming these are dogwood trees. I don't know what kind of trees they have in London, but these dogwood trees that they happen to have, uh, I picked the six foot variety for the purposes of this exercise. Uh, these, I think, are going to add a nice pop of brightness, but still lots of fluff and texture. And it, I think it's 
a very good representation of what we see in the screenshot here from the series. So now, if you say, okay, these big wisteria trees are somewhere between, let's say nine or 10 feet tall, depending on how it works out with your branches. These dogwood trees are about six feet tall. We're creating a nice gradual stepping stone down kind of like what we see here in the natural shaping of the house and its blooms. So what we need more, we need more for sure. So what else do we see? Well, I found these close up uh, photos from the series of the Bridgerton family, and I'm sure there's some CGI going on here, but something that stood out to me were these large urns with the roses and I miss, there's some columns, I'm sure, with the stairs and everything. But this is a very simple thing that you could recreate and have at your wedding. Uh, it could either be on the altar, flanking. It, they don't have to be super tall. You could put them on columns. You could put them on the grounds. It's actually remarkably easy to do. So I went ahead and made some. And this is what I came up with. So what are we looking at here? I picked an urn that I happened to find on the Shop Wild Things website while I was on there browsing. And they have a lot of different shapes and textures and colors in both urns and columns. So I encourage you to go check out them to see what might match for your palette. But this is a 23 inch urn that I found and I believe it's like a plastic type base. And so I went ahead and made my own arrangement. Now this is not to scale, it's mostly just for inspiration purposes. And for those of you who might be trying to DIY this to yourself, a general rule of thumb is whatever the largest dimension of your container, vessel, vase, whatever is, whatever the longest dimension is, or the largest dimension, your arrangement, where the flowers and greenery and such go, should be about one and a half times that amount. So let's say this is a 23 inch tall urn. Well, okay, so let's just say that's 24 inches for all intents and purposes. So that would be a 24 inch is the base and then half of that's 12. So that would be a 36 inch tall arrangement on top of it. Does that make sense? One and a half times 23, or let's say 24 inches is about 36 inches. This is not 36 inches of an arrangement, but just for visual purposes and for me to make the design what I wanted, this is kind of where we're going. Your local florist will know how to do that. Don't worry. Um, so what we're, well, the focus is here <laughs> are these beautiful urns that we see in front of the Bridgerton house that the Bridgerton family is posing next to. They've got lush green floral, or not foliage, not floral, but foliage from their, I'm assuming, roses in there. And I thought, okay, cool. Shop Wild Things already has a lot of greenery. They already have a lot of roses. Let's just keep making our imaginary shopping cart grow. So I went ahead and found this nice garland. Uh, I think it's more of a stem. You can see there's a stem element in here. And I just went ahead and made my own little arrangement with a few of those and just shaped them in here. And then I took the liberty of just mixing and matching some of their, they have rose stem bushes. They have uh, like real touch large stems, different, you know, all sorts of different finishes. I took the whites, the ivories and cream. So I don't think it has to be all exactly bright, bright white. I think a little ivory is nice in there too. And I just made myself a nice little arrangement here. So we got the urns, we got the dogwood trees, we got the wisteria. We already, these are a lot of the elements that we could really use. So I thought, okay, like let's visualize where this is gonna be. So that brings us to some hypothetical environments that I made myself, <laughs> including this one. Uh, that I just superimpose a green grassy field in here. And so we've got our little inspiration picture up here. And then we have our <laughs> our trees. And so what I, in my mind, I think the wisteria trees kind of flanking each other, mirroring each other. Um, those are what we're gonna use in our imaginary wedding scenario. We're gonna have these dogwood trees are a little bit smaller, flanking them a little bit further out, just kind of surrounding and framing that focused altar ceremony location. And then I went ahead and found a picture of these kind of just classic folding chairs that are at a lot of uh, venues for wedding purposes. They're very common as are the shivari chairs. And I thought, you know, these mo this picture just stood out to me because they had the moss green balls. And I was like, okay, well you can get boxwood balls like that. Uh, 
and and hang them and that's equally cool but then uh going back to the picture that we had earlier they they have <laughs> they have these little topiary balls in their arrangement so i was like okay this is perfect it could be a nice aisle runner you could have white rose petals uh, I mean, it could get really fancy really quickly if you wanted, and I thought, I'm, I need more visuals. So I went ahead and played around with it a little bit more and got some silhouettes. We've got a beautiful couple in the middle. We've got their bridesmaids and groomsmen, and I thought, I want to use those urns. Maybe this may, I'm not sure that they really need to be up at the altar area. I really like the natural tree vibe going but back at the seating chart, usually there's a board or something like that, or signage or something, or even at the front of the aisle, um, I thought these urns could be really pretty. Oh, they could be used elsewhere in the event, but I just thought, you know, for inspiration purposes, there's so many urns in this series. Once you start looking, it's crazy. So they, it's, it sounds like a little detail, but it's one of those things where, like, if you really visually took in the series there's probably a lot more urns in your memory than you realize okay ending my rant about urns and moving on so i thought okay this would look really pretty out uh in a nice outdoor environment whether this was a golf club a nice beautiful field meadow whatever and then i thought okay this could work really well as on a pavement type setting you could have um because because their house you know their house is there is no front yard Oops, whoops there is no front yard they're just they're just on a street and i'm assuming this is a cobblestone street of some sort so uh that's that could easily be where this is set and then i went ahead because i think a lot of people uh tend to find themselves in a ballroom of some sort whether it's at a hotel or a center local center or something so i just went and picked a local ballroom that i know really well and put it in here and just superimposed my styling on here and I was like okay if this was in a bottom room we would need more so I went ahead and added some drapery just to help make uh, a little bit more contrast and make it stand out a little bit more and I chose kind of a blush ivory backdrop specifically so the white would stand out more obviously you would probably not have these folding chairs inside but you get where I'm going with this Thank you all so much for joining me on my very first inspiration board video process. I hope you guys enjoyed this experience as much as I did. All of the links below to products that I have found are going to be linked down below in case you want to DIY this yourself. And if you would like pictures, make sure you check out my blog. I will put screenshots of everything that you see here so you can send it to your local florist and designer if this is something that you want to have at your event. And I would love to know what you would like to see out of the Bridgerton series. I'm going to be working my way through the episodes one at a time, ball by ball, party by party, and exploring all the things that we can create in our own real world here. So let me know what you're most excited to see about next and any feedback that you have, leave it down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this series as it kicks off. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for more content like this.